the very beginning. And the reason um, we're doing this is actually Karen. Karen talked about um, a lot of new people and would we go through, you know, what is it about food that is so medicinal? Why should we eat the food that we eat? And what the effects of some of the other foods are? What we've been told by doctors and science and what is a really good food pyramid for us to have? Um, and, and this is where you can feel free to ask questions during this session. It's for you. Um, uh, but please mute yourselves when um, there's shuffling going on or breathing or phone calls going on in your house. So we start off with food has complex intelligence. And what that means, folks, is that the food that you eat with every meal is talking to your body. We have we have a DNA, right? So we've got 23 pairs of chromosomes, so 46 chromosomes that code for about 20,000 proteins. But we in our body need about 200,000 proteins. How do we know? How do we make them? Mm -hmm. them? Ah, we there you are. Hi there. Hi, Margaret. <laughs> Hi, Sushima. We're a bit ta we're tardy. Ah, that's okay. That's okay. Um, okay. And so food, we are saying, has complex intelligence. And what I mean by complex intelligence is every molecule of food that you ingest is going into your body, talking to your DNA. We've now found out. We didn't know this before, but now we do. We suspected it, you know. But now we know that it goes and talks to your cells. Your cells have, a, and the food sends out things called microRNA, little amino acid peptides, into your cells, your cell reads those, and it reverse transcribes these bits and pieces into your DNA and tells it what to produce. So 15% of your DNA, of your genomic expression is made by food. Another 15% comes from the bacteria that are sitting in your gut. And can you describe things that kill the bacteria in your gut, on your skin, in your nose, in your hair? Anyone take a, take a stab at this? And I'm not sure if I can unmute you all or, or, or what? Uh, sorry, yeah, Margaret. Genetically modified ingredients. Yes, yes, genetically modified ingredients will mess up our food intelligence. What else can you think of? Allopathic uh, prescriptions and, and document medicines. Absolutely, medicines will kill your gut bacteria when your gut bacteria are killed, 15%, uh, think about 15% of your genetic expression that is affected. Think about an additional liver in your body that is completely impaired because the gut bacteria make your water soluble vitamins, they make short chain fatty acids, they make neurotransmitters. And as Lan said, if you eat um, antibiotics, you're pretty much wiping out your gut bacteria in one fell swoop. Anything else anyone can think of? Watching stress. the news television. Yes, yes, stress. Stress will kill pretty much everything in your body. It will irritate your vagus nerve. Your vagus nerve comes out of here and it goes, snakes all the way down your belly and goes into your abdomen and so on. And, and that is the nerve that determines whether you'll respond to something from your body's perspective, which is to retain and maintain its health, or whether you'll respond to something from a stressor on the outside. Environmental that, effects. Hmm? Environmental effects. Totally, the environmental effects. And what's happening when the outside stressors, when you listen to all this news, which is saying, oh, COVID, COVID, or when you hear about airplane crashes or people dying and bad things happening, your body is getting bombarded with stressors. And what these stressors are doing is they're upsetting your parasympathetic nervous system. They're putting stressed hormones into your body, which are telling your body what? They're telling your body to run. Mm. And they're telling your body to run 24 seven. When these stress hormones tell your body to run, all your nourishment is going towards running and it's being taken away from your heart, 
your liver, your lungs, and only focusing on the organs essential to get you from here to safety. And so a lot of people who live with chronic stress have chronic disease. Um, and food has a very positive effect on these. So, so every morsel of food that you eat is talking to your body. And the more processed foods you're eating, the more genetically modified foods you're eating, the, the less interactions of a healthful nature between your body and your, and your um, health and your body and your uh, food. 90% um, of our DNA is actually, um, is actually non-human DNA. So you are not really you, you're an empty shell and you are a host for trillions upon trillions of bacteria, viruses, prions, fungi, parasites, E. coli, you name it. Um, they are your host to these creatures, and these are the creatures that are really giving you life. You have about four to five pounds of bacteria in your gut that get wiped out from any kind of steroids, aspirins, Tylenols, antibiotics, x-rays, radiation, chemotherapy. These are the things that wipe out your gut bacteria, and gut bacteria are critical to life. If you didn't have good bacteria, you'd be dead. And there's a point here. The first point is to understand that food talks to you. The second point is to understand that we need ferments in our life every day. We need to not eat things that will destroy our bacteria. And so I wanna go around the room and see what ferments everyone is eating every day, starting with land. Land, tell us about the ferments you eat. Um, I'm, am I muted? No. I'm eating uh, beet kvass, um, miscellaneous vegetables, cauliflower, daikon, um, zucchini. Um, fermented? For all fermented. I can't think of what else, but a lot of different vegetables as they come in. Cucumbers, um, that comes to mind for right now. But the, and, and cabbage. And cabbage. Yeah. And, okay, yeah. awesome. Uh, Karen. Karen, Karen is also an ace fermenter and makes the most amazing ferments. Mm -hmm. What are you eating these days? Well, right now I'm eating a curried kraut, uh -huh. which is super yummy. I make a coconut water kefir, which is really yummy. Um, cheese, kefir, those kinds of things. Lots of different veggie kefirs mostly. I mean, veggie ferments. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Uh, Margaret, what sort of ferments are you eating, my dear? You have to unmute yourself. Okay, why don't we go to the next step? Am I there? Uh, yes, you're there, you're there, Margaret. Okay, I can't get any of you yet, but one of these minutes I will. Okay. Um, yes, we're, um, we're eating the, the cabbage uh, slaw, you know, fermented, mm -hmm. and uh, beet kvass. Mm -hmm. um, what else? A lot of raw vegetables, almost raw, mm -hmm. and um, any anything that we can um, uh, milk the raw milk. Yeah, yeah, it's got lots yeah. of bugs in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Sunshine, you want to unmute yourself and tell us what you eat by way of ferments every day? Okay. Um, well, I. You know, I usually mix my sauerkraut with all sorts of vegetables mm -hmm. and I make my kefir with milk kefir. But Karen, if you have any extra water kefir grains, I would love to try learning to make water kefir. Um, also, um, I, I curdle my milk. You know, I allow my milk to turn and I make cheese out of it. Awesome. Mm. Um, what else do I do? I, oh well, I I um, I don't. It's I, I, it's not really fermented, but I um, take my salmon and I make my uh, grovelox. That's fermented. And, okay, and I yeah. I do I do that with lamb, and I do that also with beef. Mm -hmm. um, what else do I do? I don't know. Just about everything. Just about everything. 
since I'm running out of time at places, mm -hmm. it ends up, I, I end up having a ferment without intending to. <laughs> so guys, Sunshine just pointed out some very um, fermented vegetables, fermented milk. Someone has music on if you could mute yourself. Fermented vegetables, fermented meats. You can meet pretty, uh, ferment pretty much everything. Um, it's easy to digest and it gives you, confers you with the microbiota you need to be well. You'll find mm. that without any effort, you're better. Claudia, what's any, do you eat any ferments at all? I love to ferment. I've been fermenting since my grandmother showed me when I was six years old. Mm -hmm. uh, she was from Germany and she had a big, you know, barrel in the in the cellar you know the whole german deal with the weight and all that so i got totally so later on i learned how to make kimchi from a korean woman so i have in my refrigerator and i have every day i have kefir from raw milk here um when it gets i have two jars of it and one jar I kind of let go to cheese too and then um i'm gonna make kvass today but i have always kimchi miso sauerkraut uh pickles um I'm, I'm currently, uh, don't, I'm not growing a lot of food anymore. I used to, I'm just getting my garden going more here, but I really enjoy, you know, any and all vegetables uh, fermented. I, I probably will do some cauliflower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. awesome. I love fermented foods. As much as I can eat them, I have it probably every meal, something. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Maria, tell us about the ferments you eat daily. Um, I'm totally failing in that. I, I was good for a while and then I, I got off it. So I have it in the fridge, but I haven't eaten it. Okay. Okay. Even a spoonful will do. Yogurt right. is a ferment. Cheese is a ferment. Raw cheese is a ferment. Raw milk is a ferment. But what kind of ferments do you enjoy eating? Well, so you're saying yogurt. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I, I was trying to avoid dairy, but then I, I did buy some yogurt this week, so I've been having it every day. Mm -hmm. But what I have in the fridge is some kimchi and some pickles, mm -hmm. but I haven't consumed them. Ah, ah, yes, yes. So yeah. I just, I don't know, I think I just, I have this hang up about, I, I, I don't mind the flavor, but there's something about it that's just not, um, I haven't started the routine up again. Gotcha, gotcha. The trick to that, I think, is taking a small portion out or just leaving your jar or bottle on your dining table. And then with every meal, just throw in a half a spoonful or a teaspoon of the ferment uh, or a tablespoon if you are so inclined and you'll get into the habit and think of it as a condiment, you know. But, the, but it's absolutely critical that with every meal you get a ferment because you're getting minerals that are released into your body very quickly. You're getting the microbes, you're getting enzymes, they're very critical to digestion. And so everything you eat will be better digested with ferments. And these are tiny changes you make to your life with very big, long lasting effects. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get my routine in there. <laughs> yes. Sushma? Yep, yes. To, um, since we spoke, uh, I've gotten out the, the master tonic yeah. and, and now we're, we're really uh, putting that on the salad in the daytime and <laughs> I'll, I'll try and put it on my scrambled eggs and, and Ralph's. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Takes down blood sugar, is a great ferment, will help you digest bullets. You can digest bullets with master tonic. Please use it in your everyday life. And if you're around here, I'll come help you make your master tonic. So yeah, because I've only been used, we've only been using it in the winter time, and ah. uh, had it in the back of the fridge, and and um, it's good. And what about um, um, vinegar? You know, the the apple cider vinegar. That's good too. The raw, unpasteurized apple cider vinegar has the mother, which means it has the microbes. But if it's a, a year old and it look, it's looking very. Um, yucky in the bottom do yes. i just shake it up and and, yes. and keep drinking it yes that, that yucky part is a massive source of b vitamins it's wonderful and it's very mm. rich in vitamins okay well i'm going to start on using that too um okay good awesome awesome uh joseph do, do you eat any ferments at all in your everyday eating yes i've been working on um some yogurt and some sauerkraut 
beautiful, beautiful. Every meal? No, two or three. Well, I switch them off, but I'll do every meal. That's fine. Okay, awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. I have one thing I forgot to add that maybe everybody else has too. Uh, kombucha. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And um, I'm really having a great time with all the second ferments. So I did a soursop one which was just so good and they have fresh cloves off the tree here and I threw that oh, in so good oh and then the other thing I forgot was I make a lot of hot fermented hot sauce oh, the best, the best. how how does she make kombucha yeah, kombucha you get the mother you ask people for the mother they'll give you the mother and you make a little tea camellia senescus with a, a cup of sugar in it and a like a half a gallon and the mother sits there and eats the sugar and ferments that tea. And it's this beautiful, delicious, sweet tart tea that is just, just wonderful. Maybe when we get together, then somebody will bring us some. Yes, absolutely. I have some, I can bring you some on my way to and fro. And you can grow your wonderful. own. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, your sons will love kombucha, yes. Good. <laughs> all right, next up, Carol. Talk to us about if you eat any ferments at all, yogurt, cheeses. Well, I can't eat dairy, so uh, but I do have the almond milk yogurt, which I don't think that's fer fermented. But I also eat the uh, coleslaw every day. Okay. And so I put a lot of uh, vin the um, uh, bragged amino apple cider vinegar on it. Okay, okay. That's awesome. Uh, what I would recommend you do as a gateway to eating fermented foods is run out to you know, one of these tourists, Sprouts or Molly Stones or Woodlands or even Costco, I think, and get a raw, unpasteurized sauerkraut. Do you like sauerkraut, Carol? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, okay, well then scratch that idea. Hmm. Do you like kombucha or kvass? Have you ever tried those? I think kombucha has caffeine in it. I can't take caffeine and okay. I don't eat sugar. Okay, okay. Kvass might be a good ferment for you where you just take beets, mm. cut them up, one third beets, two thirds water. You ferment it on your kitchen counter for anywhere from three days to six weeks. And what comes out, you strain off and drink. It's delicious. It's delicious. It's delicious. Margaret's uh, kvass is to die for. <laughs> to live for. To live, to live for. for. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, and, well, and the I, reason... I was going to add another one that I really love that I didn't mention is a, a cauliflower kanji oh yes, yes. because and i find that when i do when i make it the cauliflower stays crisp for a very very long time yes. well, what is that that's delicious what is that that's a very delicious kanji where you take bits of cauliflower so one third cauliflower and two thirds water add to that turmeric mustard spices ginger if you want a few carrot sticks and it'll ferment and just leave it on your counter it'll ferment and you get this wonderful sour beverage uh, that you can drink and then you can scoop out the cauliflowers which are also sour fermented that are simply delicious and, and salt you have to and have this you can have salt or you don't have to have salt but i put in salt because it tastes so good <laughs> what else carrots 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 and cauliflowers and a mason jar uh, about two, one third to two thirds carrots and cauliflowers. Top it up with water, add spices. It is, it'll combat any viral disease. So these are the things you can have, you have on hand to prevent. I mean, I don't think I've been sick in years and years. You just don't get sick when you're eating good fermented food. If you're eating good fermented foods. Um, all and right. Do, and do you leave that the same as the beet kvass about five days? Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Has so anyone, the, is the anyone saw with the vinegar, the uh, amino, is that not uh, fermented? Uh, yeah, no, so that, it's not, the Bragg's apple cider vinegar is a fermented beverage, so that is fermented. The coleslaw is not fermented. And what you want is to increase the bacterial diversity in your body. So you wanna eat a variety of ferments, as many as you can. And you okay. don't have to eat giant quantities, just small quantities. And you'll find that over time, you digest foods better. People who can't eat meat digest meats better with, say, a sauerkraut or, an, or a pickle that's fermented. Or milk products digest better with a ferment. So it, it'll aid in uh, assimilation and digestion. 
one thing I'm going to try, this is sunshine, is I was given one, a package of um, cauliflower rice, you know, a cauliflower that's been riced. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm going to see about making the kanji with that. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. I don't know if it'll, how it'll turn out, but yeah. One way to find out. Yes. <laughs> it'll be an adventure. Yes. Later. Mm -hmm. Hi, Claire. Can you hear me? Claire, can you hear me? Just unmute. Ah, let me ask her to unmute. Can you hear me, Claire? Okay, we lost her. Okay, Ellen, tell us about the ferments you eat. So I have a big container of sauerkraut that I eat a lot with my meals as a condiment, mm -hmm. as well as um, some curtido. Mm -hmm. And, you know, other than that, um, I used to make my own kefir, but I, you know, when I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's mm -hmm. in 2018, I stopped eating the kefir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, I, I used to eat also a lot more yogurt and now I do eat yogurt, but usually like as a dipping sauce, you okay. know, but like gotcha. uh, lemon and garlic in there for a dip sauce. Gotcha. Gotcha. I do have a $50 gallon of master tonic <laughs> sitting in my back refrigerator that's about two years old now. It's awesome. It'll never be destroyed. Bring it out. So Get it out. <laughs> if, you, if you're listening, mm -hmm. um, you know, that is like common. But so it doesn't go bad, huh? Mm -hmm. Not, never goes bad. It'll, it'll live for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. <laughs> So how would you suggest I try to consume this Master Tonic? Master Tonic is way better than balsamic vinegar on your salads. Mix it up with nice cold pressed olive oil and use it on your salad dressings. Okay. Throw, throw it, mix it with butter and throw it on your meats as a sauce. Throw it on your steamed vegetables or cooked vegetables and it's, it'll lend zest to your soups. Okay. It's wonderful on everything. Just try I'm not to eat a, it. I'm gonna pull it out of its, you know, indented spot Mm -hmm. in my refrigerator and and see if I can try to consume it if not maybe I'll try to make some new um but I was also um making myself and drinking a lot of beet kvass which again when I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's in 2018 um you were talking a lot about keto and I think at the time you thought that the beet kvass might have a really high sugar content and recommended I stop drinking it uh, depends on the sugar level and the, how much you have soured it. If you have totally soured it, um, uh, there's going to be a lot less sugar. And depending on your level of keto, if you're if you're practicing no sugar at all, then it doesn't contain sugar. But if you're eating moderate amounts of carbs, then a pretty soured kvass should be okay. Yeah. Okay. And I do drink kombucha. Okay. Kombucha is actually more sugary than um, kvass. Yeah. And this is a sweet kombucha too, so it's not. It, he puts sugar in it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I do love miso. I didn't realize that that really, I don't know if that really counts, but I do love miso. Okay. Miso is a wonderful ferment. All the Japanese well, it's virtual. It's the how do you, how do you make miso? You buy the miso paste from the store, which is fermented with a, 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 a microbe called aspergillus and you throw it in your soups or add it to your salad dressings. Natto is, um, is a ferment made from um, soybeans, and it's it's the slimy thing, which is very rich in vitamin K, uh, natto kinase, and a whole bunch of enzymes. So wonderful ferments out there. I would I would suggest uh, exploring ferments that appeal to you. Don't eat things you're grossed out by, but but try different things because there's nothing as wonderful. Oh yeah, that miso, organic miso. You can buy it for it. Where do you buy it? Uh, you can buy it in Whole Foods. You can buy it in the, any health food store or okay. yeah, maybe Trader Joe's even. Yes, yes. Other than taste, is there a difference in the different forms of miso? You know, light or yellow or, or dark or brown, all of that. Uh, yes, there are different kinds of fungi, bacteria, yeasts, and different types of misos, different strains. And the, the more variety you eat, the better your bacterial ecology. You want an ecosystem in your gut that's diverse, 
that cannot be stressed or strained by the ordinary um, strains of life and that's robust. So eat lots of ferments if you can. Thank you. Um, any other questions on ferments? I have a question. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, um, when, I, when I make the cheese or, um, you know, I strain off the whey, mm -hmm. I, I have about a gallon of whey. I can't consume it fast enough. Uh -huh. what, are some of, what would some of the good uses be for whey besides just putting it in my drinks? Uh, just ferment it. It'll last forever. You can... Um, you well, can... whey doesn't last forever in the refrigerator, does it? If, if whey, fermented whey does, it'll last forever. It'll just continue to sour and become absolutely delicious. Tart, it will carbonate, and it's like this fizzy, sparkling water, which has got this kind of sweet, Swedish, sourish taste. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Okay. It is delicious, yeah. So I have a question. And raw milk, raw milk whey. Okay, so yes. what about like, uh, <laughs> what about yogurt? way uh that too if you can get the way out of yogurt sure well you know you can strain yogurt uh yeah. and get the way out yeah. i you know when you can't you can't get all you participating solids out of the, the uh, yogurt way so when you put it into a jar in the refrigerator you can see the milk solids sink to the bottom mm -hmm. and the whey's on top mm -hmm. and so how long so i always toss that after two weeks mm -hmm. Never toss whey. It is so precious. It has got the smaller proteins of milk. Um, it has enzymes, minerals. It's got. So does that go bad, Sushima, in the refrigerator? Not if it's fermented. It will never go bad. Okay. Another way that I use the whey sunshine is, you know, Brad likes to eat rice, and I use it to soak the rice, or I use it to soak, um, like grains and things like that. Great idea. Great idea. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Good idea. Thank you. Great idea. Another yes. point about, about whey, uh, we, we fed it to our preemie babies when, when they couldn't have um, milk or couldn't get anything else. Yes, very good point. Very easy to assimilate and digest. Rich, that green color is B12 and I mean, a B5, excuse me. And it's um, wonderful, wonderful for people who, are, who have failure to thrive. And sunshine, so, sunshine, you can make um, a whey soda. So you take a bunch of whey and some juice and maybe a little sweetener, and you might need to add a little water too. And you can either just drink it like that or you can ferment it. Oh, so, great. Yeah, yeah, thank you. That's a yeah, I'd, I'd like the recipe for that. Me too. Okay, share it, guys. Share it. Uh, share the recipe, and I'll I'll send it around to everybody. So, so with the miso, um, I don't take soy, and miso has soy. But there is uh, one health food store that sells a miso that has no soy in it. So that's still fermented. That's still fermented, and you can okay. use it by all means, by all means. But I would encourage you to go to a place like say Rainbow. It has vats and vats of different types of crowds ask him to and they let you taste liberally so ask to taste everything and then pick something that you enjoy eating and then start with small it's a it's a start with a gateway food that that you enjoy and then take it from there it'll make all the sushima rainbow. rainbow yes sushima i was going to say that some of these stores don't let you taste right now or dig oh, into that right. yes i forgot yeah. sorry after yeah. this is over yes <laughs> Okay, is someone else was trying to say something? No, okay. All right, and so let me tell you a story about ferments. They took these two rats, two sets of rats. One rat they gave a heavy dose of antibiotics to, and they wiped out their guts clean. The second set of rats still had their microbiome. They fed both rats organic mercury. 99% of the mercury in the antibiotic rats went into their body, whereas 99% of the mercury in the guts with their microbiome intact passed through their feces. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so basically the rats that did not have a microbiome were poisoned to death. And the rats that had a microbiome, a thick, nice thick bacterial layer lining their gut escaped scot-free. And this is where you want to develop uh, resilience. 
If you have a gut that does not have this bacterial wall, all sorts of things are gonna escape into your bloodstream. When proteins from the food, when poisons from the stuff you ingest escape into your bloodstream, what's gonna happen? Anyone take a guess? Destroys the lining of your gut. <laughs> yeah, it's destroying the lining, but something far worse is happening. Your system can be poisoned. Yeah, yeah. So that's when you develop allergies to milk, to walnut, to almonds, to cherries, to dairy, to, to eggs, to this, to that, and the other, because your gut is leaking. So it's not that you do not have the ability to digest those foods forever. It is because your gut needs to be healed and sealed in order for you to be able to eat all sorts of foods and enjoy them. May I say something about, I, I took a nutrition course years ago and it was incredible. People there were there with all sorts of allergies. And we found that if you rotated and did not have the same food day after day after day. So one day you'd have um, sauerkraut, another day you might have pickles, mm -hmm. another day you could have the cauliflower crowd, you know, you switch. You don't have chicken every day. You don't have um, beef every day. You, it, the, and the seemed to be the key was about every five days mm -hmm. you, could, you would have chicken. Every five days you could have fish. Every five, and then there are different kinds of fish. There's lamb. Mm -hmm. And when we did that, almost all the people lost their allergies because what they allowed was the digestive enzymes for that specific food to build up in the five days for the next time they ate it. Yes, yes. Mm, Very important. Very good science. Your enzymes cannot be exhausted by eating mono foods. And so the point Sunshine just made was so critical because now we have kids that whose food scope has narrowed, narrowed, and they can't eat peanuts, they can't eat this, they can't eat that. So now pretty soon they're eating just these five foods and you eat those five foods long enough or just eat one or two foods pretty soon you're not gonna be able to tolerate even those foods. And so your life, the scope of your life narrows, 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 narrows. Your body gets malnourished and you develop chronic disease. And that is the genesis of chronic disease, which is why I'm still on slide number two. Uh, but it can't emphasize this enough. Uh, what has happened with refrigeration, modern refrigeration, is fermentation has been tossed out as a method of preserving food from summer and spring that you needed in winter. So in the old days, mm -hmm. you, would, you would slaughter a pig in summer, you would eat the fresh pig, then you'd make sausages, eat them a little bit later, and then you'd turn the rest of the pig into prosciutto so that throughout winter you had a meat to go eat. But at the same time, you were getting this precious lactobacilli, you were getting all these enzymes, you were getting raw meats that were insanely delicious. And so our ancestors have always eaten a large portion of their diet as fermented foods and thus have very, very good guts that allow them to digest a wide variety of foods. So um, any questions on this? All right, next slide. And so, so the point here is, you know, we could talk until the cows come home, but the key here is to just do it. That's the Nike symbol for just do it. Mm -hmm. Take it into your hands, go to a store, get your first ferments, do it. You're gonna hate some, you're gonna love some. There's only one way to find out. Dabble in fermentation experiments. Your first experiments, you might toss them all out. That's what compost bins are for and start fresh. Start fresh with a new ferment every day. Um, a few things to note in order to have good health. And so what we want to do is not be prescriptive, but rather tell you or talk about foods that are really, really good for all of us, that have been frequently maligned, that have been treated as pariah or leper foods by modern science, modern medicine, the industry, and so on. Um, so, so I'll just start with the water. Our water today is fluoridated, marine water is fluoridated and chlorinated, Sonoma water is chlorinated, and what do the halogens do? Anyone take a guess? 
fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. These are all halogens in the periodic table. Mm. And they have different atomic weights. And each one replace, replaces or displaces the iodine that your thyroid needs. Thyroid. It's a thyroid mm. issue. So if you eat, drink, young boys or young girls who drink a lot of fluorinated, fluoridated water, because we're told to drink a lot of water, are guaranteed going to have suppression of their thyroid, besides a whole bunch of other dangerous things. So try and get clean water that's neither fluoridated or, un or chlorinated. You can do well water, filter it. You can go to springs and get your water. You can arrange to have spring water delivered. And try to avoid water that comes in plastic cans, because that contains xenoestrogens, mm -hmm. which are... Mm -hmm. You're listening? Yes. Oh, xenoestrogens are things that cause breast cancers. They are replaced, they displace your estrogens and cause fertility problems, a lot of problems in hormones that you need for your brain, your reproductive system, your digestion, and so on. So, clean water, we're about two thirds water. So, imperative to take the time to go out and find good water. A second corollary to that is when the doc, someone does this fad where you have to drink 11 glasses of water a day. Folks, that'll kill you. That's not healthy. There's a reason God or nature gave you thirst. Drink when you're thirsty. Stop drinking when you're not thirsty. If you drink too much water, you're going to pee away the minerals in your body. You're going to get severely dehydrated. Runners die from overhydration. So clean water unfluoridated, unchlorinated, and just enough, just enough. Uh, the second taboo um, thing that we have come to almost uh, have, have become our belief is that saturated animal fats are bad for you. Shun that belief. Uh, saturated animal fats contain very, very valuable sacred fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, K, and E. And I would say, when you go home today, oh, you're already home, sorry. Uh, toss out your industrial oils. Toss out your polyunsaturated oils. Cook with fats that are heat stable. Cook with fats at low temperatures. Cook with fats that contain A, D, K, and E. The plant's fats do not contain A, D, K. They only contain E. And so I would advocate if you're not well, if you have allergies, if you have chronic disease, if you have Crohn's or colitis or, or tuberculosis or cancer, I would advocate saturate or any kind of demyelinating disease, you know, MS, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, so on and so forth. Eat saturated fats. Butter is a saturated fat. Coconut oil is a saturated fat. Can you think of other fats that are saturated? Uh, olive oil, I suppose. Olive oil is partially saturated. It's, mono, it's a monounsaturated, meaning it gets, yeah. it gets hardened in the refrigerator. Um, Cocon coconut oil? Coconut oil is super saturated. Yes, coconut oil, mm -hmm. palm oil, lard, tallow. Avocado. Bacon, bacon av fat? Uh, well, bacon fat is solid, yes. Avocado oil is polyunsaturated. It's mono, mono, largely mono, some poly. So, so I would, um, if you can, go to the trouble of making ghee. Ghee has a smoke point of 480 degrees and will not burn. And it's a mm -hmm. wonderful fat to cook your food in. Excuse me, can I, I, I tried something new last week. I made some ghee and I mixed it with some coconut oil. Excellent. Excellent. It's, it was really delicious. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's exactly what you can do. If you don't want to eat all butter, mix your butter or your ghee with olive oil or with coconut oil or palm oil. Add spices to it. Add turmeric to it. Make it interesting uh, so that you will take your saturated fats with your eggs, with your steaks, with your vegetables, with your salads, and so on. Mm. If you want to eat monounsaturated, if you eat, want to eat liquid fats, eat minimally processed, cold pressed, monounsaturated fats, which means which have a large component of monounsaturates, meaning 
single one double bond, just one double bond in the molecules. And um, olive oil is one of those. Peanut oil has a lot of monounsaturated fats in it. Avocado oil as well. Um, but I would cook in the saturated fats. I would use the monounsaturated fats for not cooking, for salad dressing, because <laughs> they will still oxidize upon cooking. So, Shma, what about black sesame seed oil? Uh, polyunsaturated. So okay. use that raw by all means. Uh, I would not cook it. Um, the, the fifth item to eat is lactofermented vegetables and foods, and we just talked about them, so I will not belabor the point, except with every meal, try and find things that you enjoy eating that are lactofermented, and do it every day. Do it meal after meal, every day, it'll become second nature. Um, pastured eggs, it's critical to eat eggs that have not been raised in factories, that have seen sunshine, so they're making vitamin D for you, A, K, and E, that have rich yellow yolks and do not fear yolks. If I had a choice between eating eggs, um, whites and yolks, I would eat the yolks. Yolks are rich in fat, yolks are rich in cholesterol and cholesterol is the mother of all hormones. This myth, there's this huge and fraudulent myth spread by non-science that cholesterol is bad for you. That cholesterol is actually the molecule that gives you extended lifespan, that protects you from heart disease, that protects you from cancer, that gives you beautiful skin, that allows you to reproduce favorably and, and uh, reliably, that gives you brain power. Your brain has a large component of cholesterol. In you it. Other? What's that? You repeat the first sentence. You said cholesterol is what? The mother? The mother of all hormones, yes. Hormones, yes. Hormones are made from cholesterol. So if anyone tells you cholesterol is bad for you or your cholesterol levels are too high or stop eating foods with cholesterol, that is false science, false. Big cross, suspect that person, suspect the science and go read about cholesterol. But why is it that the medical profession is so bent on on uh, telling people i mean i'm i yes, yes. had a fight yeah. with our doctor to get ralph off it and uh, yes and, and he did and, and he's never looked back but yes. um, so many of my friends mm -hmm. say oh i have to take my st what do you call it statins. Yes. Statin. Yes. i'm going to jump in all the doctors are brainwashed by the pharmacological industry and it's terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you I think you're right. Yeah. So, so when when one one of my sons, for instance, has high cholesterol, uh, the exercise. Well, of course, he has to change his diet, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so, ironically, if he has high cholesterol, the diet that will reduce his cholesterol is a high fat diet, which contains a lot of cholesterol. And what, the, what that diet is doing is it's reducing the inflammation so that his body does not have to have massive amounts of cholesterol to deal with the inflammation that's happening in his body as a consequence probably of a low-fat diet. Are you, are you with me? Yes. Uh, yes, yes. yes. It's yeah. like a circle. It's like a vicious circle. You stop eating fats. You stop eating cholesterol. You go on stack, okay. Uh, you go on a low fat, low cholesterol, uh, puritanical diet. Your doctor tells you to take statins, so now you're taking statins. So now your cholesterol level is really low. The statins act on an enzyme in your liver, which is coenzyme Q. They break down that pathway. And all these enzymes are needed for your muscles to work. Margaret, mute so I can talk to you. Okay. And so as your blood cholesterol, your ability to make cholesterol dies, and as statins impair your coenzyme Q pathway, what's happening? Your muscles need cholesterol or coenzyme Q to operate. Uh, people die of heart failure, the very thing that they're trying to protect themselves from. 
And so you have a massive rate of muscle failure. You see this typical shuffling gait in people on statins for 10 years. They also get colon cancer. They get all sorts of cancers because cholesterol fights cancers. Cholesterol is the underpinning of vitamins. Cholesterol is the underpinning of hormones. Someone needs to use their own. Um, okay. Uh, and there are two parts to cholesterol, HDL and LDL? Yes, yes. There are two Don't parts. we need to pay attention to that? See which uh, is... Marginally, but not really. The LDL sometimes gets elevated if you have inflammatory disease, but it is a marker. It is not the cause of it. It's like, it's like saying the firemen are responsible for the fire. The cholesterol is the good guy that is present at the source of your fire and having high LDL, you get blamed, the LDL gets blamed for the problems when in fact, it is band-aiding over the problem. There's a lot of research on it and the primary research was the, was the Framingham study. It was over 50 years, they took a couple hundred thousand men, women, and children in the town of Framingham in Massachusetts. And their end conclusion was the people who lived the longest, ate the most fat, had the most highest cholesterol laden diets. They lived the longest, they were the lowest weights, they were the most active and uh, the most healthy. That was the conclusion of the Framingham study that is frequently misquoted to say uh, that the conclusion was the opposite. Sushima, do you have a, a readout or that we, that we could uh, have that presented so I could show that to, to this particular son especially or? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I will that send would, it. That would explain that, yeah. Yes. And, and, and about the diet. Yes, yes. Um, all right. So, so everyone understand that saturated animal fats contain not just saturated fats, but cholesterol, which is awesome, which is awesome for you. You will get a glowing, beautiful skin if you eat lots of cholesterol and animal fats. So, so please do not shun saturated fats. Do not shun cholesterol. I would say statins is a multi-billion dollar industry, one in, I think, four uh, American men and one in maybe two American women are eating statins. 10 years of statin usage, look for colon cancer. A lot of my neighbors got colon cancer. I was bringing them giant vats of um, sauerkraut while they were dealing with chemo and radiation. But a lot of these people have been recklessly and almost criminally put on statins. Mm -hmm. Now, organ meats, very, very rich in all sorts of nutrients. So I would say your grandma was smarter than the doctors are. Eat liver, eat oysters, eat egg yolks, eat kidneys, heart, good for you. Meat and bones and bone broth. You need a good source of calcium for folks who are allergic to dairy. Uh, Carol, I would recommend making a stock or a chicken soup or go to Good Earth. Good Earth has nice chicken feet slash them, add a gallon of water to it, and boil yourself, salt some nice bone broth, rich in gelatinous stuff, rich in nutrients, rich in collagen, rich in calcium, and other minerals. So I make bone broth from many, many different, uh, several different kinds of meat. Mm -hmm. I also make it when I get um, salmon frames, which are the spine or the frame of the salmon, and I eat the salmon off the bones after briefly steaming them and then make a stock out of the bone, remaining bones, which I really enjoy, not regularly, but occasionally. I want to know if you have any comments on that. That is wonderful. That is awesome. Uh, how else, who else does bone broths and stocks? Would you talk about how you make them and when you eat them? I'll start with mine. I have my morning tea with broth. It's called bakute, green tea with broth. It's just wonderful. And I, I have <coughs> bone broth or chicken broth, bone broth uh, with uh, coconut milk when I get up. Oh, a delicious, delicious. I want to try to start making my chicken broth or my broth in a pressure cooker because I hear it's clearer and very flavorful and a lot quicker. It is very flavorful, all right, yes. I'm going to mm -hmm. add to that I use pressure cooker regularly for all of my bone broth. 
And depending on the type of bone and the thickness and all that stuff, there are different times that I do it. But sometimes, and actually fairly often, I make two, um, two potents of it. Like I'd make one cooking it, say, for an hour and a half. And then strain it and take out the whatever stuff I want to take out, and then make a second one, which also sometimes gets to be just as gelatinous and a little less dense, but just as tasty. Mm. No, I definitely use a pressure cooker too, and boy, sometimes there's no bones left by the time I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I used to always buy a bag of. Um, uh, whatever the bones are for chicken uh, from Molly Stone. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot harder to get the bones from the, the de from the meat department at a grocery store anymore. Right. I used to always. Uh, so I would just buy a whole chicken, Carol, and, and um, you know, use the, boil the chicken for like a, a couple of hours, take away the, the skin and then throw the bones and the um, bones back and, and let let them cook. Or if you buy a, you know, like a hunk of meat with, buy it with bone on, you know, that might be the bones you need. And I've done one, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Terra Firma is a, is a farm store, I guess, that sells lots of wonderful bones. So go to your local farmer's market. Um, farmers, they sell bones and they're wonderful. Oh, that's a great idea. Okay. Yes, and talk to, if you know any of the people on this call, a lot of them know the farmers and, you know, you can carpool and go together um, to, get, to get bones. Uh, also good, I was going to say Good Earth in their freezer section often has um, a variety of bones. Oh, I oh really? Yep. And I've also been buying like neck bones, like beef or goat neck bones, because there's a lot of meat on it. So you get a lot of meat to make like a meat salad and then a lot of uh, yummy broth from that too. Very where do you get, yeah, where do you get the, the neck bones, Carol? Well, I got them from the farmer. So like oh. Sam, Salmon Creek Ranch up in Bodega or uh, Stemple Creek Ranch. You, know, you just go to your different, or like the farmer's market. Um, you can ask them for particular cuts. Did, are you going to a butcher shop out there? Could you take a drive and, and go? Is that how you get them? Or is there a farmer's market that you have to go to? Um, it depends on the farm. So like Salmon Creek Ranch, they, you can either go to the farm or you can go to the farmer's market. They, they do both. Um, Stemple Creek Ranch, I think, is just from the farmer's market or from they sell also at Good Earth. Yes, yeah. I found the I found the chicken uh, feet there, the only place, and and it's wonderful. Yeah, you know, if you look at the Marin Weston Price website, and I can put the website in the chat, there's a big resource list of where you can find you know different uh, farmers and their meats and uh, different food resources. Yeah. Oh, that's great! Thank you. Yeah, it might be nice to take a drive to yes. some of the places and yes, yes. I'd like the idea of not driving, although I can I, I've appreciated in the past I'm not driving right now. So I got a lot in my bones, actually almost all of my bones from online sources. And I've sourced and checked out from where they get their bones and they usually come out to be anywhere from five to seven dollars a pound for a variety of different kinds of bones. If anyone is interested, I can give you the sorts of the things like grub market and they and I've checked out the farms from which they obtain uh, their bones so that's just another option great that's great um the, the one thing to remember about all bones is where do your poisons concentrate <laughs> yeah, in the marrow in the marrow in the bone when animals drink fluoridated water, where do the fluoride, the appetite crystals are found on the inside of the bones? Mm. So you wanna make sure that your animal is raised on pasture, not in a factory. They didn't grow up drinking fluoridated water. Uh, there were no herbicides and pesticides. And, and that's what part of eating is the sleuthing and finding good sources of food. Uh, so that you know you're eating high quality bone, high quality eggs, high quality fermented vegetables, 
high quality fat. Um, uh, someone's someone needs to mute their phone. I'm hearing. Uh, I think someone is uh, uh, needs to mute their phone. Ralph, is that you? Uh, okay. I'm concerned because uh, in the news, all of those um, uh, places where they process the meat, all the workers were getting COVID. Mm -hmm. And I'm really concerned about buying a product prepared by um, multiple people who have COVID. Yes, yes. Uh, so yes, that is factory slaughterhouses Meat processing plants, you want to avoid, you want to go preferably to farmers markets, local butchers. And fortunately in Marin and Sonoma, we're very lucky to have a lot of those. So if you have okay. a need, talk to me or Karen and we'll get, get you lists of farmers that are just awesome. Okay, thank you. Alrighty. Okay, so foods to eat. We, so we to, to recap, we talked about the intelligence of food. We talked about our gut bacteria, our microbiome, and, and to give it the foods and, the, and bugs and the, and the substrate it needs to really thrive. And, and a general set of guidelines on how to eat, what to eat. Um, people have said it's terribly difficult to do all this. Actually, it's terribly easy to do all this. You go to the store, you buy Rommel, and you chug it. You go to the store, you buy raw butter, and you eat, you just bite into a stick of butter. Or you go to the store and get raw cream and, and drink it. Salad dressing is the, a gateway food that I would say is very important uh, for you to learn to make. And it's super simple. You just take the best oil you can afford, cold pressed olive oil, add to that your master tonic, that's your salad dressing. Make a gallon of it and just shake it every time to throw it on your vegetables. How much easier could life get? You could make a gallon of fermented cabbage or cortito or kimchi. Just throw together cabbage or even cauliflower and munch it, put salt in it, let it ferment on your counter. Uh, bone broth is not work, actual work. You just throw bones into a pot, add water to it, and then you can neglect it for the next 12 to 24 hours, right? Um, liver, don't overcook the liver for people who hate liver. I would say, please, please, please give it a second chance. Bread your liver. Just fry it very fast on the outside so that it's pink on the inside. It tastes absolutely delicious. Do not turn it into shoe leather. Many people do. <laughs> uh, does anyone else have ideas on quick, easy, fast foods that are nutrient dense? Yes. Karen. Okay, start. Please, whoever just said. Yes. Um, I, 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 haven't, I hadn't put my video on because I was doing some work here um, in this kitchen and I got hungry because I hadn't eaten. And so I put my um, fermented well, it was sauerkraut plus a few other little vegetables in with an avocado. Mm -hmm. And I, I just decided I don't like to get the pre-made guacamole. Mm -hmm. And this is so delicious just to put the fermented vegetable with the with the avocado as a guacamole and then use it yeah that is wonderful that's yeah the kinds of mix and matches you can do folks um land fast and easy food any thoughts i'd say again sushma i miss i missed yeah. the question any suggestions on fast and easy foods or fast food making tips from you for nutrient dense foods Nothing comes to me for the moment, but I'm going to reflect on it as okay. we go. Karen. Um, my, I, what I had for breakfast today actually is mackerel sauteed, just warmed in a little bit of ghee with uh, ginger and turmeric and then with a ferment, super easy and yummy. And I mean, I know canned isn't ideal, but it's still pretty nutrient dense, you know, the small fish. Oh, so could I ask Karen where she gets canned mackerel? I get it from Vital Choice Seafood. 
Um, you, but you, send can, away for, you send away for it. Yeah, but um, they have, I've seen it at Good Earth. You know, I think they have good quality uh, canned sardines and mackerel at Good Earth. Yeah. Okay. And, and I mean, how, we could do, we could always do like a group order for Vital Choice if you want yeah. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to try that. Um, I'm a bit scared to cook it in the house. Oh, you uh, don't even really cook it. You just open the can, drain out the water, warm up some ghee. I like it with ginger or ginger and turmeric and then just pop it in and warm it with a little salt. It's so yummy. I yeah. also make, I also make like a really easy um, sardine or mackerel salad. You know, you just add a little bit of I use homemade mayonnaise, but you can also just do, a, you know, some homemade. of your, your um, a fire cider and olive oil and then some veggies, or sometimes I don't even feel like chopping veggies. So I just throw in some sauerkraut with um, olive oil and fire cider and you have a yummy meat salad, you know, wow. fish salad. My mouth is drooling, I'm drooling here. That sounds good. What is you know, one there? thing that, sorry. Go ahead. What one thing that worked for me was, uh, you know, over the years, feeding a family and everything and working really hard and burn out and all that. I looked on food preparation as the one thing I got to be creative with every day. And it became a real joy. So I really took away that energy of, oh, God, what a drag. So it just became something that, that I really embraced as something that, is the highest form of honoring myself and my family and others I'm feeding and giving myself a creative spirit. So it was like a headset change rather than looking at it as something that, ugh. and now that I have more time to myself, I'm working part time uh, still, but you know, it's even more so, you know, so I, I rarely ever buy, I mean, I, I can't remember the last time I bought any pre-prepared foods or anything. It's just part of, the mindset of really honoring yourself and, and the creativity involved and and the whole thing of you know just being organized when you go shopping and you know stock up and you're ready to go I'm, I'm really lucky here I've, I've found resources so anyway that's my little two cents worth wow that was brilliant yes yes I think that you said it all changing your mindset is probably the most important thing you can do mm -hmm. and, and love what you're doing because you're putting it into your body. Mm -hmm. So critical, so critical. You know, Orly is not on this call, but Orly always used to say, she, she interviewed this food, this famous cook, and uh, she was raised very frugally, raised very poor. And she said, you know, this is how I cook. I, every day, every morning, um, I pull everything that I have in the fridge out and then I make up my menu and decide what to do. And then she used to go shopping for her. She was French because she used to go shopping for her vegetables every day. And it was a joy. And it was a joy. Yeah. Well, that's what I do in the evening sometimes when I don't have any energy. I know there's plenty of vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea of having the, the mackerel and something like that that would save me um, f from cooking and yeah. preparing. I, th my problem is extreme fatigue in the evening. And when I'm cooking for three people, it's really hard to prepare something, you know, that. Yeah, fast and easy, fast and easy. You grab some sauerkraut or some, uh, make a salad dressing that's yummy, throw it on a lot of vegetables, you know, pull out a pate, pull out your sardines and mackerel, saute them briefly serve them with raw milk, raw butter, raw cream, or hash up some liver fast, you know, this, this, it's easy, it's easy, five minutes, 10 minutes. All right, anyone else? Yes, I'm here. I would love for you to clarify for me, because my daughter this week had made some soup, and it's very warm where she is in Dubrovnik, it's hot, mm -hmm. and she noticed that there was um, a layer forming on the soup, and she didn't quite like the smell of it. Uh -huh. Now, how can we tell which of the which of those little layers are actually just, you know, like the mother at the bottom of the vinegar, like a layer at the top of the uh, fermented vegetables? How can we tell when it's okay to eat that and when it absolutely should be removed or the whole thing should be thrown out? 
color, color. If it is uh, like it's got reds and such, toss it out. But if it's a gray, white fungus on top, residing on top, aerobic microbes residing on top, by all means, you can stir it back into it. Or if you're grossed out by it or squeamish, just strain it off. Strain off uh -huh. the and then you're done. You can eat the bottom. Um, but it's not poisonous. It is harmless. It's called K-A-U-M, calm. And it's a, it's a fungus that grows because it is in contact with air. Everything right. that's fermenting underneath is anaerobic. Yeah. So if Thank you. Here, do not toss the baby with the bath water. The rest of the ferment is awesome still, probably. Kind of piggybacking on that, one of the things that I've learned to do when I make a stock is I chill it after making it, put it in the fridge and it chills and it usually puts a, a f um, the fat layer on top. I skim it off or put it up and use that separately for cooking. Mm -hmm. That way I'm able to use the stock and not necessarily have it mixed in with the stock um, yeah. as well. Yes, yes. And it's mm -hmm. critical, it's key and critical to remove the fat in the first couple of hours. You don't want fat cooking for 24 hours. It will oxidize, it'll go rancid. So whatever bones and meat and such you're tending on the fire, I would say, uh, Take out the first top, refrigerate it, whatever's on top, take it, take it off, and then or then put the bones back in for your second stock. So it does not have the fats, and then you're gonna get broth. Great, thank you. And if you do a meat stock, that's a possibility too. Uh, the meat stock is done a lot earlier than the bone stock. So just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, Paula, Paula, Maria, any ideas? First fast foods. Sorry, you're um, Yeah, no, yeah. Um, what's the question? Because I think I'm like... Fast foods. Easy first fast foods that are nutrient dense. Oh. Uh, well, the first thing that comes to mind is eggs mm -hmm. and yogurt. Something like that. Amazing. Fast yeah. and easy. That's right. Perfect, perfect. Uh, Joe, Joseph. Uh, sorry, you are, let me, yeah. I don't have anything right now. I'm overwhelmed just trying to absorb some. <laughs> okay, all right. You'll get there, don't worry. Okay. Uh, but remember these food groups and as long as you buy from them, you'll be fine. You'll go on and you know be eating like a pro in no time. And you'll find that it takes you less time to cook. If there's a COVID outbreak, you're not dependent on anything outside. I barely even go to the grocery store. We have zucchinis and kale in the backyard. We get milk from the farmer. We have a freezer full of fish and meat. So you just don't, you just don't care, you know? Uh, Ellen Marie, recommendations. Yeah. So I think that pate is a great fast food. Mm, yes. I know that, um, you know, I would love to start making some pate. I've heard the recipe in the in the uh, Jacques Papa cookbook. It's actually liver mousse is what he calls it. It's wonderful. It's called liver mousse, but I think pate, I buy it. Um, you can buy it ready-made at Good Earth. It's about $9, so it's not inexpensive, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, it lasts, you know, for several meals and it's a great nutrient dense food. Yes. And the other thing that I make is I make this raspberry uh, gelatin dessert, which is basically raspberries, uh, and some maple sugar or some maple syrup and water and uh, gelatin. Mm -hmm. And it's a great way to use berries. I know that that has sugar in it and, you know, that's probably illegal, but it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a nice way to use extra berries and it's yummy. Okay. Awesome. And you can put creme fraiche on it. Wow. Where, do you, where does she get the gelatin? You know, you use one that you use any uh, gelatin for hot liquid. Um, there's a lot of different brands you can get. Mm. What do you call that, Sushama? Just gelatin, Co collagen, uh, gelatin. It's called gelatin. Yeah, gelatin. Yeah, it's it's uh, for hot. For you can buy two different types of gelatin. Those that uh, dissolve in cold and those that dissolve in hot. This recipe is for the gelatin that dissolves in hot. And you mm -hmm. just take a couple of cups of raspberries, you put them in a saucepan, you break them down, they break down really easily. Um, you put them um, 
uh, through a, they break down actually completely. Then you uh, put them in water with, sprinkle some gelatin on it, pour them into jars and you have a, like a raspberry jello gelatin dessert that you then put, can put creme fraiche and mix with nuts. And um, it's a, it's a nice snack. Nice, nice. Mm, nice. Sounds delicious. I can send you a recipe, Margaret. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that, Ellen. Thank what's you. What's your What's your email, Margaret? I'm about to look it up. Yeah. Could you put it in the chat for the yeah, rest yeah. of us? Yeah, put it in the chat or send it to me, and I'll send it to everybody. Okay. Yeah. And thank you. All right, Carol. On to Carol. Uh, you're asking me about easy fast foods. Yes, easy fat. What What's your thought on fat? Easy fast, first fast nutrient-dense foods that you could enjoy? Um, well, I, I think of the, the, well, I use the almond milk yogurt, but I, but I put um, um, like banana or, or frozen blueberries or frozen uh, cherries. I have these big frozen cherries. And then you let it sit. You let it sit so that it, um, it all blends together. And um, uh, I guess I do that, yeah. Okay. I'm big on the, the, I always have the coleslaw in the refrigerator. And so, and I use a lot of the Bragg's amino, apple cider vinegar, whatever. And so, um, so that, to me, that's the fast food is that I go, coleslaw. you know, yeah. it, you just dish it out. It's always there. All right, yeah, coleslaw is great also, yes. So think of fast foods that are nutrient dense that have especially uh, bacteria in them, microbiome, that'll, he that'll heal your microbiome, that have fats, that have enzymes, that have minerals, and that have a, a huge amount of nutrient density per gram. And that's what you want to go for. One thing we haven't talked about is sourdough. Yes, sourdough is, is uh, sourdough is, it's wheat, but it's fermented wheat, and it's fermented in a way that is frequently tolerable to people who are allergic to gluten. So yes. Does it have to be wheat? No, I just made a flour dough using, I just made a sourdough using rice flour. Uh-huh. Uh, whatever oh. the bugs can eat, whatever the bugs can eat, you can make. Uh, but, but what I would say is, for easy first nutrient dense foods, stick to things that are that have fats in them, things that have proteins in them, things that have enzymes and minerals in them. And that's 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 gonna give you the most bang for the buck in in terms of the nutrition you get from these things. Mm. What would your choice be, Sushima? My choice would be raw milk, raw butter, raw cream, lots of salad dressing on, on a huge amount of zoodles right now. Um, <laughs> I would eat some cortito. I drink- What's that? Milk. Cortito is basically a sauerkraut that's Mexican, so it's got um, hot peppers in it. It's absolutely delicious. It's so good, Margaret. You should get some. You, they, Wild West Ferment sells it. Oh, yes. It's really good. You, you have, to say, I have to send away for it? Uh, Wild West ferments at the farmer's market and Civic Center has it. Oh, okay. And they also sell at the markets at the, some of the grocery stores, but I don't know where, which ones, Margaret. You can maybe reach out to Wild West and find out where you can pick it up. It's really good. Yeah. Is anyone going on Sunday to the farmer's market in the um, yeah, center? I do. Could we go with our masks and, and you could show me a few places now that Sushima is not here? I would be happy to do whatever you would like that would help you, Margaret. Yeah, yeah. because I'm pretty desperate now for, for good food and... Um, okay, well, give me your phone number. I'll put yeah. you in touch with each other, guys. I'll put you in touch okay. with each other. All right. All righty, okay. Uh, sauerkraut making videos, there's videos galore. And I think this is a good place to stop because we are now at almost noon. Um, but did you, did anyone have questions and did you, did you want to talk about how you're feeling, what you want to do next? Anyone, any comments? I have one other comment, which is something I've discovered that, uh, duck eggs, which are larger than chicken eggs mm -hmm. are also good eggs. And I use them when I'm, you know, wanting eggs and this may be cost effective or something like that, but I'm finding I'm enjoying the taste as well as the size. 
Oh yes, that delicious, that double the size of an egg and the yolk is to die for. To live for it. The yolk is to live for it. To live for it. And, yeah. and the thing that the farmer told me at the uh, Civic Center, Sunday Civic Center Farmer's Market mm -hmm. that sells the duck eggs, Mm -hmm. The duck eggs are ten dollars a dozen. The chicken eggs are nine dollars a dozen. Go for the, the duck. duck. <laughs> the duck eggs have you such a huge yolk. Yeah, yes. such a huge yolk. You get all this extra fat and protein from it. So awesome idea. Awesome. Yeah. Just just make sure you ask them what they feed their ducks. Same with chickens, because I was at the farmers market last year and asked a duck farmer, duck egg farmer what they fed their ducks and they were feeding them genetically modified food, which I don't feel comfortable eating. No. So you just need to make sure you always ask the farmer what they feed their animals. Yeah, really, good important. Point. really important. Good, good reminder, yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Joshua, could, could you put up the link for the sauerkraut recipe again? Because I want to take a screenshot of uh, it. Sure, uh, here. There we go. And, and, okay. Uh, and oh, bef oh. before we go, mm -hmm. uh, like people to be thinking about Norel. She wanted to be with us, but uh, she's having severe headaches and um, she yeah. j they just moved where there's no stairs. And so she might be just overcome, uh, you know, with fatigue. But um, keep her in your thoughts and a little prayer um, that, that she'll, um, she'll be okay. Yes, yes, yes. Shashima, are you not, you're not in Marin because you had, um, I think, uh, chamomile or something in your yard that I was going to clip. Yes, 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 yes. I'm not in Marin anymore, but hmm, uh, was it chamomile or comfrey? I forget which. Comfrey One or the for, other. Your, for the bones, comfrey. right? Comfrey, yeah. yes. That's it. I do have it in my yard and I can, you know, we can schedule some time and you can pick it up from there. But we okay. missed Ralph. We missed Ralph. Ralph. Hello. I'm Hi, here. Howdy. You didn't comment on easy first fast nutrient dense foods. Well, I like uh, Tillamook ice cream. <laughs> 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 you ever try the Tillamook? Very, very Yay. good. <laughs> Raw cream without the sugar. <laughs> With lots of maple syrup. Mm. 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 He's very good for his diabetes. <laughs> well, you know what? He's earned it. He's earned it. Yeah. yeah. You might what? just give, it, give, it, give him a little talk about caffeine and, and a, a lot of coffee in the morning. He doesn't drink caffeine, does he? Does he drink a lot of coffee? Two cups of regular coffee. <laughs> I grind my own beans. You grind your own beans. Have about two. Coffee. Oh, enjoy the experience. Enjoy Thank the you. experience. Yeah, so live, uh, live I have a I have a joke for Ralph. Uh oh. <laughs> and it was it was in our newsletter from Sausalito Village. So let's see if I can. It was easier to see the picture and and read it and get the joke. But let me see if I can do it. There are two old elderly people talking, and the one saying, "Oh, my memory! I just can't remember the passwords to my to my, all my different you know things on the computer." And someone said, well, what I do, I change my password to the word incorrect. So that every time I forget, every time I forget my password, it says, your password is incorrect. <laughs> okay. I'll try that. Funny. Very funny. <laughs> On that <That's> note. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thank you, Sushima. Thank you, thank you for doing thank that. You. Thank you. And thank yeah. you so much. And I hope next time we, we meet, people are going about their business using all sorts of yummy foods to make their meals and feeling better. Yeah, and you're Sushma, ordering? Sushma, this was great. I really appreciate it. You know, yeah. even if it's a review, I just, I always learn so much from everybody and I really appreciate you doing this. Thank you. Oh, my likewise. Life. People have and such good ideas. Thank and you. are you, are you, making, thank you, thank are you, are you making the order? Are you making yes. the homeopathic? Yes. 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 Okay. So email me separately about that. If you want anything, I've not okay. done that yet, but I will. Okay. All right. Thank you. Ciao. Thanks, guys. Ciao. Hey,